Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in the last one I built this i5 2500K gaming system. It featured the legendary quad core, 8 gigs of RAM and an R9 Nano, a tiny but still capable AMD Fury based card. I overclocked this machine to 4.2 GHz right from the start and it's how I tested out the performance and gaming capabilities. A renowned overclocker, the i5 can go higher, but the roided up Intel stock cooler may not be the best choice for such an endeavour. That said, there were other looming factors that ended up shattering my 5 GHz dreams. So last time, as I said, I boosted the clock speed straight up to 4.2 GHz from 3.3. This is significant as it is and it's no trouble on this Z77 chipset motherboard. It's as simple as changing the number 33 under the clock ratio to 42. There we have it, 4.2 GHz. This made a noticeable improvement over stock speeds in CPU based situations like Cinebench, where the multi-core score went from 981 to 1073. I also went back and retested Battlefield 5 at a later stage in the tank mission, where we saw our average and percentile figures improve by a respectable margin. The problem was that in CPU intensive games like this, our i5 was still maxing out on all cores, causing stutter and frame drops as the action started to heat up. I then thought well why not push it higher. I said the Intel cooler may not be the best solution, but that doesn't mean it isn't a solution. With that it was time for a restart and another delve into the BIOS. This is where I noticed a pretty significant problem. I could not for the life of me find the vCore setting. Under the advanced voltage settings we had the choice to adjust everything else, but vCore the option that allows us to increase or decrease CPU voltage, thus making a higher clock chip more stable, was missing. Now I expect this from a cheaper board, and from one of those you might find in a pre-built system, but a Z77GB board with no vCore option? Preposterous. With this newly acquired info I took to Google to try and find a solution, using only the most accurate terminology in hopes for a solid answer. The first things I saw didn't exactly fill me with joy or confidence. Anyway, the latest discussion regarding this board came from the Tech Power Up forums where someone was facing a similar issue. The advice was to update the BIOS, something I neglected to even think about in all honesty. I headed to the motherboard support page, or at least I tried to. This is why no one likes you Microsoft Edge, is it any wonder why we all download Chrome? Things finally loaded and I was disappointed to see that F11A, the BIOS we already had installed, was the latest version, so I guess we were out of luck. I had read elsewhere that this board was compatible with another Gigabyte BIOS, the D3H board, which does in fact unlock the vCore option, but any adjustments made don't actually work. The option just shows up and does nothing. Kind of like me in high school. I'm getting distracted. V-Core adjustments aren't essential to an overclock, it just means we may be able to squeeze more megahertz out of the chip if we had the voltage control option. We can still push it higher, but the V-Core will always essentially be on auto mode. Another restart later, and I changed the CPU clock ratio to 46 or 4.6 gigahertz. This also proved completely stable, to my surprise. I then tried 4.7, 4.8, and 4.9 respectively. These options all allowed us to boot into Windows, but 4.9 seemed to be the breaking point. We saw the logo on screen and then it just froze. This happened every time, followed by a blue screen and an error. When I tried to reboot again, the BIOS just locked up too, so I got stuck in this circle of restarts with nowhere to go. The only way to resolve it was to remove and reseat the CMOS battery on the motherboard. Following this Windows did boot and went straight into diagnostic mode before eventually landing on the login screen, about 15 minutes later. So 4.9GHz proved too much but it turns out 4.8 is perfect. The system started and I jumped straight into CPU Z to check that the overclock had worked. With that confirmed it was onto Cinebench to see how things looked. Clicking the usual run CPU test button saw us get off to a flying start, the test running quicker than ever before. It still took a while to complete, but once it was done I was pleased to see an additional 
300 or so points over the 4.2 GHz result. This was still with the roided up Intel cooler attached, so the noise as you can imagine was pretty deafening. I was quick to remember though that this is still a 4 core, 4 threaded chip. That's fine, it really is, but with games utilising more cores and threads these days, it can be problematic in some scenarios. Two situations that haunt me are Battlefield 5 and Kingdom Come Deliverance, so it was those titles that would be getting tested yet again. I apologise for the terrible quality of Kingdom Come, for some reason the sharpness was off the scale in the game, and this played havoc with the video quality, leading to some pretty janky footage. However, the frame rate was certainly improved. The second question I wanted to answer here, aside from can this thing hit 5 GHz, was how much of an improvement will overclocking actually provide? In the case of Kingdom Come, we saw solid numbers that increased in all aspects, including those 1 and 0.1% figures. The CPU usage was also down, with a lot of stutters being eliminated. Battlefield 5 was arguably more pleasant though. While the average over the 4.2 GHz result wasn't significantly different, the 1 and 0.1% figures were more consistent. This led to a near total elimination of stuttering, and the 2500K was far from maxing out on all cores like it was before, hovering around 80-90% to usage. I think that if you go for a 2500K in 2019, then a significant overclock is essential for some games to function at their best. What's more, expensive cooling or top tier motherboards aren't exactly necessary to do this either. Don't get me wrong, I'm a little disappointed at the lack of vCore control with this gigabyte board, but this board does still let us hit decent enough numbers, ones that will make a real world difference. I don't really have a conclusion to draw, I guess do better research than me when it comes to motherboard shopping. Seriously though, I wanted to push this chip a little more and hopefully answer any curiosities you may have had about the 2500K in 2019, and what sort of difference a boost in clock speed really has. I certainly had fun finding its limits and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video too. If you did, please leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you have a 2500K running at 5GHz or beyond and how on earth you call the thing as well as what motherboard you're using. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.